Welcome back to another edition of Fly Tying for Beginners with Jim Mishura. Today we're going to tie a basic uh, wet fly. And this is just going to be like a spider type, they call them, or a soft hackle. I would call it more of a soft hackle than, they, than a spider. Spiders usually have stiffer, almost... Uh, dry fly stiffness to the hackles and the soft hackle of course are soft but the hook that I have in the vise I'm gonna use this on I'm gonna tie this on a scud hook and this is lively legs lip splitter number 470 scud shrimp nymph hook and it is one extra short this is the size 12 and this is the bronzed hook and I trim, I crimp the barb down. And we're going to use some black thread. And the other ingredients we're going to need is I'm going to make this a, a, a partridge and green. So I'm going to use a dark olive and of course partridge. We're going to use the partridge. Uh, feather and the I like these I like tying these because you can really you can really get a little bit fancy with these but uh, we're gonna go ahead and start off by putting a base of thread on there again you start behind that eye go over itself and then hold that at the 45 and just spin away and the reason I'm using this scud hook is these soft tackles imitate a nymph whether it's a mayfly or a caddisfly coming from the bottom going to the surface so they can be a little bit like in a fetal position they could be straight but they're mostly you know it's just going to look like that like I said that that fly that's struggling to get to the surface. Oop. I'm going to come around the bend slightly. And then, like I said, you could get a little bit fancy with these. I'm going to turn that upside down so when I dub, I can reach in there. And by getting a little fancy, what I mean is like you can add things to it like you can add a rib here's a nice fine gold wire and I'm gonna tie that in I like to leave my tags long on the uh, on wire ribs although this is going to be a dubbed body and that wire is not going to affect the shape of that dubbed body very much but uh, if you have your tag short, you're going to have like a lump there. So that's why I leave it longer. But I'm going to bring that back. And getting back to the rib, you can use a piece of crystal flash. And this is basically going to look like maybe some kind of an air bubble or a gas bubble that's, that's in there around the, uh, around the body as he's coming to the surface they, they they make gas bubbles and that helps them shoot to the surface eat quicker so you could use like a pearl crystal flash or something like that where you don't have to use one at all i'm going to take my dark olive dubbing it is an antron so it has a little bit more of a sheen to it than super fine And we're going to, I always, when you, when I'm dubbing Antron, it always seems like you need a little bit of moisture on your fingers. You can't have dry fingers when you're dubbing anything. But just take small amounts, because like I always say, you can always add more. Oop, I got a, way too much came out. Here we go, this ought to do it. I had to lick my fingers there again. I 
and we can start that wrap and like I was saying with the rib in there you see it doesn't really matter because I'm making it I'm actually making this tapered I'm gonna put some more on there as you can see I I'm tapering it but you don't want to go ahead and put a bunch you don't want to make it you don't really want to make a tapered noodle as much meaning you don't want it real skinny at one spot and then real fat up up there it's better to put more on than to try to do that because you'll end up with way too much if you have too little not a problem too much then you're having a little bit of a problem there we go now we got a pretty nice taper on there and we're about one and a half almost two eye length from the eye of the hook and now if you chose to put a rib in there go ahead and wrap this I got one hair that I want to get rid of there. And it's probably a good idea to, even though we don't need to on this one because it's dubbing, it's probably a good idea to get your get your mindset and the and uh, your your muscle memory with the rib to go to counter wrap it all the time. Because when you need to counter wrap it, it'll be there. You'll do it automatically. You won't even kind of you won't even think about it. So a nice counter wrapped rib there. I'm gonna go ahead and tie that off for three or four. Put some in front of it. You could even go on top of it. This one isn't gonna get any on top. And then you could break it off or just helicopter that off put that on the side now for the hackle we're gonna use the partridge and I'm gonna widen this out a bit just to show you some some things but here is yeah this is partridge but this is dyed black and so this, these are part our partridge feathers that were plucked, and this is basically what you're going to come up with. And all of this is going to be there's there's that after shaft feather, but most of this is going to be gone, and you're just going to use this front part. But it doesn't matter. I mean, it could be a green one, or I mean, a black one, and another uh, material. That you use for this for soft hackles this is a hen saddle this is a hen chicken saddle so you can see what pieces I'll go ahead and pluck one of these off and there's that after shaft feather again so all of this fluff unless you really want to use that fluff you know you're gonna pull that off or you know you're not going to wrap all of that all the way up to there but you're going to tie it in by the tips and you have to watch for the length on these you can see this one that's a pretty decent length that one is actually a pretty good length but one of the problems with doing the uh wet flies or the soft hackles is getting the getting the the soft tackle that is the correct size and if you get a whole partridge skin whether it be dyed or just natural like this is it's probably better because down the bottom just like any hackle down the bottom the hackles are going to be smaller and you got shoulder feathers they're going to all be different lengths and of course you can see where I took them the most is right out of that middle back part and I'm going to pluck one off the top here just to show you oh, 
and there's that aftershaft feather again. And usually you throw these away, but you could find uses for them. I mean, they, they make great little... You can take this and make a little uh, wing on it. Whether if you want this to be a mayfly, you can make that little... Put that there and make a little budding wing. Or if you want it to be a caddis, you can put that underneath. And make a little budding wing there. But what I really wanted to show you was an example of... See how long they are? That's way... They're way too long. You know, I'll go ahead and fold that. Then you can see that. Let me zoom that in a little bit so you can see it better. You see, that's way too long. So, if you have a skin, you can uh, have a bit more choices of the feathers than rather than getting the the plucked the plucked uh, feathers. So I'm going to go ahead and select one off the back because I like that color combination. And when we tie these in, we're going to tie them in with the concave side to the hook shank. So when I prepare it, I'm going to grab it by the tip. You could even put your hackle pliers on the very tip. And then take this and stroke them all back. And now depending on if you want a heavy hackle or a sparse hackle if you want a heavy hackle you just take the fluff off if you want a sparse hackle you take them off the top with the concave side to the shank and here we go and I'm going to take uh, these the fluff off the bottom part but you have to be careful because these could break very easily. I mean, you could rip them, rip the stem very easily. Now, still, with the concave side to the shank, I'm going to grab that tip and stroke those back. And I'm going to go ahead and tie this in. Now, you could go ahead and fold that tip back to get this secured you could even leave that tip there it'll be like a little budding wing but I'm going to go ahead and trim that off now we're going to put our hackle pliers I dropped that pair I'll just grab another and put our hackle pliers on that stem and we're going to start winding and you can see since I took the hackle off the top section with the concave side to the shank the hackle is going towards the rear if I took them off the bottom or I tied this in with the convex side to the shank the hackle would actually be going forward there we go we got them all all of the hackle are standing up. Now keep your your uh, thread tight. And they tend to stick together. I'm going to come down on this a bit and then wrap back over top. And I can break it off. Take our whip finish and again with the whip finish hook it around the camel hump now we're going to turn our whip finish upside down and there's our X take that X right in there and then just rotate it around three five six seven what you prefer don't go with don't go into 10 or 20 that'll just come apart tug it tight snip that with the poke and snip and then the soft hackles partridges they they kind of like they stick together pretty 
pretty good but once you get they get in the water they're gonna spread out for you now we're gonna take my our head cement and we're gonna put a little head cement on there and I got it in the eye got it in the eye of the hook so I'm gonna take a feather a hackle that I have just laying around and I'm actually going to trim that a little bit first. And this is a large hook, so it should be easy going in. I'm going to go ahead and put that through the eye. And just pull that through, and that ensures that there is no head cement inside that eye. And I hope that you learned something from this video. I hope that you would subscribe to my channel. Please refer me to your friends. Please visit my sponsors. Let them know that I sent you. Leave comments, questions, suggestions. If you'd like to purchase this or any flies that I make, please go to etsy.com slash shop slash the flyman gym. And if you don't see it on there, just let me know what you want in a message and we'll work things out. And most of all, thank you very much for watching my videos.